By the time uh, that had happened, uh, the adverse employment decision denying the promotion, I've been an advocate for the First Amendment, telling people to stand up for their rights for years. I can't turn around and then duck and run when the fight comes. I've actually been pushing students into litigation against universities for years. So how could I then, when faced with a controversy, say, oh no, it's good for you to fight, but it's better for me to run. It, it was never an option, uh, never anything that popped up uh, in my name, and, uh, 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 in my mind rather. And um, interestingly, right after the verdict was over, I got a job offer immediately <laughs> from a Christian university. And I wrote him back and said, nope, uh, there's only one person doing what I'm doing and I've got to keep doing it. I hope that it tells the professors they need to stand up. And the most important thing is that we need several of them to stand up. They can't target me if others are actually standing up. You know, uh, when I got back from the summer, I teach in a ministry in the summer in Colorado. Uh, and after everything was finally settled, a UNCW administrator passed me in the hall and she grabbed me by the arm and she said congratulations and she whispered it and then scampered off to work back in her office. Boy, some people think I appreciate that. I don't. I don't appreciate that at all. When, when people whisper their support to me, what if all of them got up and said, no, he's right, it's systematic. And even if it were just half a dozen or a dozen at every university that just said, oh no, this stuff goes on all the time, then they couldn't just target one person. So that's the lesson I hope will be learned. Sometimes uh, we're, a, we're our own worst enemy.